Can a $10 upgrade to your old MacBook Pro make it run twice as fast? Inside this video, we are going to check it out and put it to the test. Let's do it. Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside this video, we are going to check out a $10 upgrade you can do at home by yourself on your MacBook, your MacBook Pro, and possibly see it run twice as fast. 10 bucks? Seems too good to be true, right? Now, what is this update I speak of? That is switching out the thermal paste inside of your machine. Now, what is thermal paste? Why do we need it? Let's get really, really basic here for a second. Inside your computer, you have a CPU and maybe a GPU. And these are kind of the pieces in the computer that work really hard, process most of the data, most of the things that are going on in your computer, and they get really, really hot. Now on top of that CPU and GPU, we have a heat sink. And because these parts are getting hot, this heat sink works to take that heat away from these parts so they don't explode like molten lava in your face. Okay, now this heat sink has thermal paste in between it and the GPU and CPU because it allows more efficient heat transfer. Okay, so that's what this thermal paste, this toothpaste like substance sitting between these two parts does. It takes the heat away from the CPU and the GPU. Now, why does that matter? Because the more efficiently that heat is taken away, the cooler these parts remain, the better they perform. So if you have crappy thermal paste, if it's not working the way that it's supposed to, if it's old, if it's cracked, if it wasn't applied perfectly or right in the first place, well, you're going to have performance decreases. So switching it out with better thermal paste, better quality, better application, or just no longer old and nasty and crusty, you're going to see much more efficient heat transfer and potentially much better performance. Okay, so that's what's happening here. We're switching out the thermal paste inside my 2015 MacBook Pro. We're gonna open it up, walk you through everything, and then test it before and after. Does it make a difference? Does it make my Mac twice as fast? Let's find out, all right? Now, in order to open up your Mac, you'll need a Mac-specific screwdriver. It's called a Pentalope screwdriver, and the size you want is T5. I recommend just picking up a kit like this. I recently purchased this one and was very happy with it. I'll leave the link in the description below if you want to check that out. The inside of your Mac is likely dusty, so I'd recommend a can of compressed air as well as some isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the motherboard. And of course, we need our thermal paste. Links for everything are in the description. Now, once you actually get that Pentalope screwdriver, you can open up your Mac. It's pretty simple here. Just make sure to keep track of where the screws go because the two screws in the back of your Mac are actually shorter than the rest. So I just like to draw a little diagram here and place the screws on top of the corresponding places so I remember where everything goes. That's just a little trick you can use when you're taking these kind of things apart. Now, once the cover is off, you can see there's a ton of dust. So I'm just going to lean this MacBook up against my wall. I'm going to blow out one side, flip it over, blow out the other side, and clean this case out with the isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. So I'm not going to bore you by going too in depth with what you need to do here. There are tons of different tutorials depending which MacBook or Mac you have. Just make sure to disconnect the battery before you take anything apart and then follow the tutorial for your specific device. The whole process is really straightforward though. We're just removing a handful of screws and then we can take that heat sink off and remove the thermal paste, clean it all up off of the heat sink and the CPU and the GPU, basically anywhere there's paste, we want to get rid of it using our isopropyl alcohol and a nice clean cloth or a Q-tip. And after that's done, we're going to reapply the new thermal paste. Now this is where things can get a little bit confusing because I was a little uncertain about how much I needed to add. After looking it up and doing a bunch of research, it looks like you're better off adding a little bit more than you need than not adding enough. So definitely go a little generous on the thermal paste. You don't need a ton, but just enough to make sure it will cover the entire area once you actually put the heatsink back on top of your GPU and your CPU and reattach everything, okay? So once that's done, we put everything back together and see if it made a difference. So these test results really surprised me because as you can see, they are almost identical. The thermal paste really did not do anything for my Mac whatsoever, at least on a test basis. You can see that the numbers are pretty much the same. And so when we adjust for the fact that the tests vary slightly every single time in results, I'm going to call it no difference whatsoever. However, I want to see what it actually does real world. So I went ahead and I exported some photos inside of Lightroom, 100 photos, and I tested how long it took before and after. 
And in this test, we actually did see some results. Pre-paste was a time of around 3 minutes 20 seconds, but after the thermal paste was applied, we were exporting closer to 2 minutes and 57 seconds. Now, I'm not super sure why there's such a big difference between the test results and the real world results, but I think it's because when you're exporting files like this over an extended period of time, your machine is working really hard, and that's where it gets really, really hot, and the thermal paste makes a bigger difference compared to the shorter test by Novabench, which only takes about a minute and didn't seem to push my computer as hard. So in total, our export speed increased by 11.5%, which is great. It's not double the speed, but it's still significant. The question I had, though, is if I used an older Mac with older thermal paste, would there be a bigger difference? And my wife happens to have a early 2013 MacBook Pro, and I had extra thermal paste, so I took it apart and did the exact same thing. Before the paste was applied, it took 5 minutes and 19 seconds. After I replaced it with the new paste, it took 4 minutes and 51 seconds. So, with her MacBook Pro, I saw speed increases of around 9%. All right, so we basically found out that switching out the thermal paste inside my machine only led to kind of incremental improvements. Now, some improvement is still better than none, but is not exactly the two times faster I was hoping for. Does that mean that this won't work on your Mac? Well, maybe, maybe not, right? Because if your Mac is older than mine, or perhaps the person at the factory who did the thermal paste on your Mac did a poor job, or perhaps it's just old and crusty because you live somewhere very dry, any number of things. Let's say that your thermal paste is not in a good condition compared to mine. You might see some staggering results when you actually take and replace the thermal paste inside of your Mac. Now, you might also just see small increases in performance. So either way, I'd say it's probably worth it, especially if you're having a Mac that is hot, the fan is on all the time, maybe it's working too hard at tasks that shouldn't take so long. Definitely worth checking out because this $10 upgrade costs 10 bucks, right? So even if it only works 5, 10, 15% better, that's 5, 10, 15% for 10 bucks. Compared to buying a new machine or switching out the hard drive, it's a way cheaper way to see if you can get some real performance increases in your Mac. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like button for me. Help me out. And if you want more great photo, video, and occasional computer update content, make sure to hit that subscribe button too. All right, peace, and I will see you in the next video.